condition. So uh, today we'll discuss about a few important aspects of the kidney disease. Uh, hemolytic uremic syndrome we have discussed in the previous lecture, so I'm going to skip that. Most important one is the crescentic glomerulonephritis. So any uh, patient who is present with a rapidly progressive renal failure, that means the creatinine is worsening uh, on a weekly basis or rapidly in four or five days, and the patient has uh, proteinuria, microscopic hematuria. So then you consider a possibility of crescentic glomerulonephritis. So crescentic glomerulonephritis is basically a finding which is uh, diagnosed based on the pathology, but the clinical presentation are that of a rapidly progressive renal failure. Now that there are three differential diagnoses uh, as per the etiology of crescentic glomerular disease. One is the vasculitis, which is basically what you get in the kidneys called posseimmune crescentic GN. Second is an anti-GBM disease, also called as the uh, the uh, the um, good pasture syndrome. We also have immune complex glomerulonephritis like SLE, IgN nephropathy, which can also present like a crescentic GN. Okay, so here uh, we are. Uh, so we can differentiate this based on the pathology. Okay, so if you do an immunofluorescent microscope, uh, where we are looking mainly for the complement proteins and the uh, and the antibodies. So if you're going to get a lot of antibodies and a lot of complements in the biopsy. Uh, we consider immune complex glomerulonephritis as an etiology. If you're going to get uh, uh, only antibodies which stain along the basin membrane, you're going to consider anti-GBM disease. If you're not going to get any antibodies, uh, you're not going to get any uh, the uh, complement, then you consider the possibility of uh, post-immune uh, glomerulonephritis, post-immune necrotizing glomerulonephritis. Now, this is a pathology you get in patients with vasculitis. Okay. So vasculitis which affect the kidneys are usually small vessel vasculitis. So those things should be considered in these individuals. So this is the picture of a crescent. So this is a glomerular capillary and a crescent is basically an extracellular proliferation of the inflammatory cells, cells predominantly monocytes and the macrophages. They also contain some, uh, uh, some amount of plasma protein and the fibrin. Okay. So here you, this is the glomerular capillary, which you can see patent, okay, patent loop. And outside that you have crescent, okay, that outside that you have the uh, uh, proliferation. These are the inflammatory cells which are in the Bowman space, okay, that is the definition of crescentic glomerulonephritis. Here you can clearly make out the uh, crescentic uh, things. So next we are going to uh, move into the uh, some of the systemic diseases which cause uh, uh, renal dysfunction. So one among them which commonly comes in the exam is the HIV. So what is the kidney pathology which can be seen in HIV patients? So uh, now most of the diseases which occur in HIV patients are be because of the uh, uh, viral itself, virus itself, or maybe because of the drugs which are used in the treatment of HIV. The important drugs which are used in the treatment are protease inhibitors, which inhibit the pro protease uh, enzyme of the HIV virion. So these drugs such as indenavir can cause uh, microcrystals. So they can become microcrystals within the kidney tubule and can cause obstruction to the kidney. But a specific entity which is seen in HIV is known as HIV-associated nephropathy, also called HIVAN. Now this is the forms a large chunk of cause of end-stage renal disease in the United States, especially in those with African-American uh, descent. So in such individuals, uh, the ART is found to alter the course of the disease. This is because the virus itself is responsible for HIV virus uh, associated nephropathy. So the, these patients can present with nephrotic syndrome, they can present with a large kidney on kidney uh, scan, or they may present with the uh, worsening kidney function. Now, if you're going to biopsy, you're going to find some focal segmental glomerular sclerosis. Now, what you can hear is you see this pink, pink thing in the mesangium. This is the big, basically a focal sclerosis, okay, which can happen. And ultimately, patient will have collapse of this capillary okay this collapse the capillary is going to progressively collapse okay that's why this pathology is also called collapsing glomerulopathy okay so do remember this terminology collapsing glomerulopathy is one of the key feature or key terms which you get in hiv the patient may have a uh, slightly higher urea and creatine may have normal blood pressure next is lupus nephritis which is the uh, uh, involvement of the kidney in a patient with systemic lupus erythematosus now, uh, renal involvement can present with uh, one of the clinical features, either microscopic hematuria, proteinuria, worsening kidney function, or could be a swelling of the legs. Okay, so these are the pathology. These are the symptoms which a patient you might come across. 
So based on the pattern of involvement of the kidney in SLE, we classify lupus nephritis as one of the six categories. Okay, in the first category or class one, we have completely normal kidney, but you can pick up the antibody in the immunofluorescent microscope, but the kidney structure looks normal. In the second pathology, which is called mesangial glomerulonephritis, you find these antibodies in the mesangium, and you also see some extra cells in the mesangium because of inflammation. Okay, it's called mesangial glomerulonephritis. Next, we have third is focal glomerulonephritis. Here, what you're seeing is basically proliferation of the endothelial cell, mesangial cells in the glomerular capillaries, and uh, you see the proliferation, but it's limited to focal. When I say focal, less than 50% of the total number of glomerulae are involved. Uh, in class 4, it's a diffuse proliferative glomerulonephritis. That means you have uh, um, more than 50% of the glomerulae are involved, and in each glomerulae, you see some proliferative changes. That means you see a lot of endothelial cells which are proliferating. You also see a lot of uh, inflammatory cells in the mesangium which are higher than normal. Now, class 4 is the uh, severe uh, form of the disease which you can get in lupus nephritis. That means patients usually present with worsening kidney function, hypertension, uh, maybe a severe proteinuria, and maybe severe uh, microscopic hematuria. So it is the most common and the most severe form of the disease, which should be uh, should be treated as an emergency. Class 5 is diffuse membranous pattern. Now, as the name suggests, membranous means basically thickening of the membrane. Okay. Here in SLE, if you get thickening of the membrane, it can cause diffuse membranous glomerulonephritis, uh, which is usually present with proteinuria. Class 6 is the sclerosing, uh, sclerosing glomerulonephritis. That means you have more than 50% of the glomeruli which have been globally sclerosed. Now, histologically, uh, there is a particular uh, entity which is characteristic of lupus nephritis, which is known as full house pattern. What does full house pattern mean? When you see uh, um, um, under the microscope, the glomerulus, you find all antibodies, IgM, IgG, IgE, um, okay? And you also find of complement okay so if you go to find plenty of antibodies and plenty of complement it is called a full house pattern and this is a specific to lupus nephritis although not pathognomic we also can get in some other disease but in mrcp exam just remember that if you're going to get full house pattern it is basically accumulate you can get all the antibodies and the complement in the kidney biopsy you should consider a diagnosis of lupus nephritis Now, how do you manage lupus nephritis? You can manage lupus nephritis by, uh, there are non-specific and specific measures. Non-specific measures include control of blood pressure. Specific measures in include starting on immunosuppressive medication like corticosteroid and azathioprine or cyclophosphamide. There are certain drugs which can cause a lupus. Okay, They are called drug-induced lupus and you can find them, you can treat them. Uh, for example, the, the drugs which can cause uh, drug-induced lupus is sulfasalazine. So drug-induced lupus usually present with uh, rashes, okay? It looks like a rashes of SLE. They may have joint pain. Uh, renal involvement is quite less common. Uh, CNS and uh, uh, the uh, peripheral nerve involvement is also less common. The drugs which have been, uh, which have been known to cause uh, uh, SLE are sulfasalazine. Uh, this is the basically difference between the different class of lupus nephritis. Class 1, basically, this is structurally normal, but you find some antibodies and complement in the immunofluorescence and microscope. That's why you grade them as class 1. Class 2, you are mesangial. So you, you find you find some of the antigen antibody complexes in the mesangium. Class 3 is proliferative. That means a lot of proliferation. You can see a lot of increased number of cells. This is proliferative. Class 4 is uh, diffuse proliferative. Everywhere you get the increased number of cells as well as the antibodies class 5 is uh, thick and you can see a very thick rim of basal membrane which is classical of class 5 SLE. 